talking about gardens, one of the greatest experiences I, I have is sitting with Linda McClanahan and her husband Joel in their garden in the Harrison West section of Columbus. Um, Linda not only has a beautiful garden on the house property, uh, but she was fortunate enough to buy a second property next door and expand the garden. And, it, and she has the uh, proverbial green thumb. Uh, she's also a man with a baker as well. But in addition to that, she's a fine artist. Uh, she's self-taught, uh, began painting uh, in, in the middle section of her life. Uh, and very quickly, I think within a year and a half or two years, uh, Linda entered painting into a competition and won best in show. I think from the greater Columbus sort of Arts She's exhibited many times at the Ohio State Fair. I'm very lucky in that I own uh, two of her psychologically uh, mysterious, complex uh, paintings. Uh, you look at the paintings and you see uh, layer upon layer of tapestry as, as she tells the story on, on the board or on the canvas. Uh, and many of the paintings uh, draw inspiration from Indian cultural type themes, which is of great interest to her and her husband, Joel. So, with that good introduction, please tell us about your inspirations and about your Well, I thought I'd start off by um, saying my painting in this show is the um, cow painting. It's called, uh, I think it's called American Death with Snake. And uh, I, in my paintings, I never, everything that you can it's all very clear. I'm not, it's not, to me, very mysterious. But as far as this particular painting, um, I almost always work in Sign Painters Enamel. Sign Painters Enamel is an oil-based enamel paint that sign painters used to use to do lettering when signs were done by hand. Um, yeah, that's not done that much anymore, but what that paint is used currently for is for pinstriping cars. So it's a very tough, um, lovely paint with a lot of saturated color, self-leveling, all the little like, nerdy things that artists like me might be attracted to. The subject of that painting, uh, American Devon, um, I don't know how many of you grew up in a, a, a junior high or studied in a junior high or high school that had those socialist realist paintings in them of the, you know, the oxen uh, pulling the, the Conestoga wagons out uh, west. And I was always uh, fascinated by it that it was an oxen, and so I thought I would look it up. And it turns out that those oxen were American milking devil. It's a certain kind of cow. And it's what I, you, I call a homesteader's cow in that um, it was a kind of a compromised uh, animal that would give meat, give dairy, and also be used as a draft animal. So for a homesteader, it was a really good choice of a cat. And as I looked it up, uh, that this cat uh, kind of cattle is almost extinct right now. It's like there uh, seems to be a difference of opinion about it, uh, but anywhere from 500 to 1,200 individuals, that's all that's left of a cow that was really ubiquitous for a long time. That particular painting, um, I had done other, two other paintings in a similar style, and I sold both of them and I missed them. So I thought that I would do one just for me. And I got it all three, two thirds of the way finished, right? And I had the, uh, the background, the cow, at the very bottom, I didn't have anything. And I've always been fascinated, uh, and it's made me feel kind of good that in Ohio we have that uh, serpent effigy mound in the Adams family. And I thought, I can, I can either uh, have just flowers on the end or I could mix it up a little bit. And I thought, I don't want to do just another barn painting, so I'm going to put the snake on there. Because I like the, I, in my paintings in general, I like to introduce a little bit of visual dissonance a little bit of an edge, like a superficially beautiful, and I want to, um, I want to uh, do something good for people or make people feel good, but I, I didn't know about feeling good, right? So I always want to introduce a little bit of visual dissonance. When Chuck asked, uh, he asked us to bring at least three uh, works down here this uh, afternoon, and he specifically asked that we bring things that were in different styles or which, which show maybe that um, 
I don't do just that, or I'm capable of something else. This painting I'll be over here uh, is inspired by all the beautiful Somali ladies that we've been seeing, I've been seeing around. They're beautifully dressed Muslim ladies in the hijab, uh, the, the veil life covering over the top. And um, I know they're uh, aware that some people have a very specific kind of person in mind when they think about who is an American citizen. But I thought, this is an American citizen. And that cardinal, that's the state bird of Ohio. So I got it right to be here just like me. That particular piece is based on a uh, kind of a traditional Mughal form. Mughals would be the Islamic people in India. And there's a whole tradition of painting courtesans, and there's very specific rules about how, how the, they are um, designed. And that's really directly taken as far as the uh, gestures of a lady from that tradition. I've done a lot of traveling in India and Asia, and I've been very deeply um, influenced by the visual mayhem that you see, <laughs> you see in India. Anything goes. Uh, all colors go together. That's, that's my advice to you. The thing in the middle is that I just finished that, and uh, it's called Good Dog, and I've been kind of, uh, for some, who knows why these things happen, but I've lately been fascinated by medieval depictions of hunting dogs. And I also painted that because uh, I just been, I was feeling sort of like something that rhymes with itch. So I decided to do like a meme dog. The outside of that uh, work is, um, it's done on plywood. Um, I usually have a carpenter friend do my frames for me if I don't buy them commercially. And I got tired of pestering him, so I decided to come up with a frame that I could do myself. And that frame is plumbing strap, a kind of steel strapping that plumbers use to hold up pipe. That's around the outside of it, and I attached it with upholstery tacks and beads. I did one, and now I did two more because I liked it so much. And then the, the one on the far left over here, um, it's, I've been collecting vintage calendars for years and years and years, and um, it was building up. So I decided to move some of it on by turning it into work. And um, that, this is the result of collage. And it's old-fashioned collage, like where you like actually glue stuff. It's not, it's not Photoshopped. So, um, it, it was a real education to do, I did a series of these, I think six of them. It was a real education. I had some naive uh, ideas about how hard it would be to do a collage. <laughs> it was like, therein lies madness. Like you have like 80 different little pieces of paper and trying to make some sense out of it. So, uh, that whole collage series, um, was also came out of a sense of anger, actually. Just wondering about um, how much freedom is uh, culturally available to the lady, to the women folk. So, I'm currently working on a new piece, and life goes on, so thanks for putting up with me. Linda, Linda, before you exit the stage, um, where, where do you paint? <laughs> I, I paint in the attic. I have a little, a little dormer. It's about half the size of these tables. And, um, you know, I have a full life. I'm a gardener too, and um, I really believe everything there is no in life you can learn out there in the garden. So that's my teaching. Oh, how did I come up with the use of the oil base of animal? I used to work at the city with a uh, guy named Randy Black, and he had actually uh, studied with a sign painter. And when the sign painter uh, retired, he gave Randy all his paints. And uh, we were just talking one day, and uh, he's, I said, I, want, I really want to get back into painting. He said, well, try this paint. I, once, you, once you work with it, you'll never go back. And it was true. So I, I just pretty much 100% of the time use oil, that oil-based enamel. What's your website? 
Uh, just Google my name, Linda McClanahan. It's www.lindamcclanahanart.com. I have lots of, um, I have almost all my work on there. So if you have some, if you, if you minutes to while away, stop by. And then you interviewed to a new show. Can you tell me about it before we get the program today? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, the work I just started yesterday was for a specific show, which, by the way, as an artist, you never know if you're going to get in, right? <laughs> so I'm doing it for the show, but that doesn't mean I'll not necessarily get in. But anyway, the show is uh, centered, the theme of the show is synesthesia, which is kind of like the, a crossing of the uh, perceptual senses. So like somebody might uh, like see a color and hear a musical tone, or they might uh, um, uh, uh, see a color and, 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 and receive it as a scent, as a, as a smell, so it's kind of an interesting, um, it's interesting to think that, I mean, we know Dr. Clay sees things the way we do, right? But some people think things really different, I mean, absolutely, like, way different than we do. And I, I know a lady from Germany who, is, who has that condition, too. Yeah. And by the way, I saw some of those gardens you talk about in Berlin. It's just so sweet, isn't it? Yeah.